So, today I want to go over uh, Selfish OS X, especially with um, this this little tweet here that's got me a little, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Anyways, so there has been some interest since I have announced that I have a Selfish OS X device. Uh, I actually have it right here, a Sony Xperia 10 II, which... I absolutely hate the name of it. I don't know why Sony went with this. Um, I didn't get a choice in color either. But, you know, booze manly, so fuck you. Um, but, yeah, it's it's actually a very nice device. I would highly recommend it for any uh, Linux enthusiast. Um, it's, it's pretty smooth as far as its regular system. Uh, the Android part, it's pretty stable, but it does require, you know, a little, little bit of work. Um, just a little shaky, if you will. But uh, aside from that, I mean, the camera made of little selfish is awesome. I don't have much of an issue with it. It's uh, pretty clear, actually. Um, and, you know, I, I haven't seen the test for this device specifically. Um, it is Type-C. It also takes in dual SIM. I have the dual SIM 10 variant. Uh, this one, I actually kind of like. Um, well, this is a little flimsy for the tray. Um, you can actually put in two SIM cards or one SIM card and SD card. Um, so this is one of those phones that still keeps the SD card as well as the headphone jack. So uh, we'll be going over this a bit today. I'm you know, showing you some of these screenshots, how it looks, and uh, how this actually performs. Um, and I'm not sure which version it was. But since one of the newer versions of Sailfish OS X, or Sailfish in general, uh, these devices have become natively encrypted with LUX, uh, L-U-K-S, I should say. And what this means is that in the event your device is stolen, um, you know, they try to extract your data, not saying, you know, it's immune to any other attacks, you know, social engineering, that kind of thing, or malware. Uh, but if, if this device is stolen and any attempt to extract the data, they're futile, essentially. Um, it's, it's pretty much no different than, you know, encrypting your local Linux system, laptop, desktop, whatever it may be, servers, which is probably what you're hearing now. But, uh, yeah, we'll go through it. We'll go through some of the features of this and, um, how you can get your hands on one and get set up. Let's get in. So getting into it here, we'll do a bit of a test, kind of, you know, show how this phone works, how well it performs, things like that. Uh, to get started here, I did get this from the Wireless Circle on Newegg, and it was about $250, uh, $250, and it wasn't bad. I mean, for an open box, it was really nice. Um, you can see here, it's a Sony Xperia 10.2, like I said, it is literally 10.2, not 10.2, whatever. Um, you open it here, you kind of just get your basics, you got your phone here, you got your manuals and all that in here, nothing special. Um, and because I believe this is the, uh, because this is the international version, I was actually given this block. I'm not sure which type it is, if it's European, Japanese, uh, whatever, but I can't use this, so... Prepare to have another Type-C block on hand. I was given a Type-C cable, which I do use it. Um, but, you know, if you're US, make sure you have a US block on hand uh, for your phone. So, we'll put this all back in here, maybe. Oh, come on. There we go. Um, and I did want to touch base a little bit, too, because there is a Pine Phone version, or a Selfish um, thing for Pine Phone. We take this all out here. Um, I am currently experiencing issues with my Pine phone, phone communication uh, issues on Type C, but I did use Pine or uh, Sailfish on this for a while. It was okay. It wasn't entirely the most stable system out there. Um, it was, you know, pretty. Still looked pretty good. It performed okay. Main issues being one, the camera. Yes, I did have a camera on here. I had to clean it out after there's crap in it. Um, it didn't look, or it didn't really work, um, and calls on this were okay. Ofano was not really cooperative with the Pine Phone system, um, so you know I 
I, I kind of just put it off to the side for now, especially with the issues I have been having with uh, this. Um, Pine Phone is a good phone though for testing. I would highly recommend it if you know you're a Linux enthusiast. You know what you're doing. Um, but as far as this phone, if we get into it. You'll first notice that one I did set it off. Um, the power button. You see here, the power button is actually silver and different to all your other buttons on here. Um, but it's actually a biometric uh, thing, a biometric pad. So you can actually unlock the phone here with, there we go, finally recognized me. But uh, yeah, so you can unlock your phone with biometrics here, Selfish supports it. Um, and if we look here, we can actually get into all of our Android apps. As you can see here, we'll load up Twitter, we have our feed. Um, and we get a little back button. You don't have your home or your recents. It's literally just the back button. Um, so we can go here. We can scroll down. We can do our thing. We can load up all sorts of different modules, APKs, and all that. And you can install APKs like this is just another Android device too, which is pretty nice. Um, and as you can see here, we don't have any. I have my accounts on here, but we don't actually have any Google apps. Um, I mean, I've, I've got things for my car on here, I've got browsers, but there's no integration with Google. Like, you don't have Google Play services factory installed with this, it doesn't come with the Android app support that's licensed, things like that. Um, so if we dive back in here to settings and we go down to our Android app support and see it's currently running Android version 10 with API level 29, uh, last security patch is January 5th of this year. And it is currently running, as you saw earlier, we did launch uh, Twitter there and uh, Tile. Um, but yeah, you're, it's, it's almost like virtualizing it without virtualizing it. I'm not entirely sure how uh, this is done just yet by uh, Jala. Uh, this is a licensed thing to do though. Um, so if you do want that Android app support, it is about 49.99 euros on uh, their store. Um, and I, I got it myself, um, you know, with my home here in the UK. Um, my, my UK home definitely uses US blocks. Um, but yeah, so if you want to get into that, it will cost a bit more. Um, I would recommend it, especially if you do use a lot of your Android apps on here. But uh, we'll dive right in. So first off, we'll get into the camera. Now, camera here, yeah, I am... I have a bit of a mess here. It's not bad. Um, it switches pretty easily. I am noticing, you know, a bit low frame rate, but let's see, we can change all the settings as usual. Like here, it has a bit of trouble focusing, but once it does, you actually get a pretty good picture. So if we take, you know, test photo here, do this, comes out pretty good. So, we let it load. Oh, come on. No. Still under, trying to understand Sailfish here. So, let's see if we can go into the gallery and see our photo. Photos. Yeah, so, not bad. We're only using two cameras, I believe. Um, one or two. We'll have to check on that. But, we get a pretty good photo. You can kind of see. Got some pretty good detail to it. It picks up some of the little scratches and stuff um, on my very messy desk. But uh, yeah, so it's it's pretty good so far. Um, you do have NFC on this device as well. You do have your headphone jack, and we'll get into the next part here because this this I'd really like to touch base on specifically with this Sony device. I have never used Sony before, so this was my first experience. Um, Getting this out of the box was not a good first experience, given I had to test the modem and stuff, make sure it worked. Here's why. This. This little tray here is... I like how they designed it. I do not like how flimsy this is. I... it's... it's literally just plastic. Um, OnePlus does better with this, and that's what I previously had before, is what my OnePlus 7 Pro. Um, but I, I think this probably could have been done better. I can, you know, literally... I can... Yeah, there it is. I can literally play music on this. It's like a banjo, almost. Um, that was a 
You know what? I'm not even going to touch on that. But, uh, yeah. So, if we get into this, though, we have our SD card slot, which is actually also our SIM 2 slot, if we do so choose to. And then our Master SIM, SIM 1. Um, it, it's pretty good, aside from that. If we uh, put both our SIM cards in here. Do this. And take this out. And do this, maybe. Please. And I hate this so much. And I know it's not just me, because I've I do this kind of stuff all the time. So if we put that in there, get all the dog hair out. Let it recognize everything. Come on. And here soon we might get a message, we might not for setup. Um, maybe not. But yeah, so it, the other thing is too with this is the modems will take a bit to power up and uh, get configured. Um, I'm not sure if this is just a selfish thing or maybe it's just an Xperia thing with this device. Um, but once you plug in your sims, you get set up. You might want to wait a couple minutes, let the phone do its thing, and then continue on. Um, this kind of is the same thing too for wireless, uh, switching between your Wi-Fi and mobile data. You will need to... Oh, stop it. Anyways, uh, you will need to wait a minute to get your mobile data to initialize and get set up uh, after you switch off Wi-Fi. I have noticed an issue before where when I would walk out of the house with... Uh, Wi-Fi connected, it would disconnect and then it would take a minute to initialize the modem and get connected with the uh, LTE side and get set up there and get going. Um, so yeah, it there is some things that can be worked on. Like I said, it could just be a sailfish thing, it could just be an Xperia thing. Uh, but yeah, it does handle dual sim pretty well though, I would say. Um, if we get into it here, it's probably mad because there's crap on the sensor. Um, it, aside from that though, I mean, it, it works pretty fluid. You can go on the Home Assistant here. And keep in mind, this is an Android app that is currently running. So if we give it a minute, you do get all your, you know, the usual notifications. Pull this down here, it tells me what's going on. You can just swipe it away. And for notifications as well, this is selfish, period. You will get everything at the home screen in an event. You will not be able to pull down and see all that here. I don't know if Sailfish wants to change it, if you know the plan on putting everything in here, um, but you will need to you know head back home to get any sensor data or you know things going on like that. So please please don't crash. Okay well it looks like we're having issues. Um, but yeah, so aside from that, I would say it's pretty good. Um, you know, there there are a few things that can be worked on, but overall, at least for a Sony Xperia 10-2 on Sailfish OS X, it might be a bit pricey, but I would highly recommend it, both as, you know, privacy-oriented. Um, as you can see, there's nothing involved with having to install Google. You don't have to have all this telemetry crap on here. Um, I would definitely like to take a deeper dive into, you know, the kernel, the core, taking a look at, you know, what's going on on the phone, uh, and making sure, you know, not everything is just being sent out. Um, I haven't had any reports of it. I haven't seen anything like that before. And I know most of the Selfish OS is open source. I believe the only thing that is closed source on this is either Mer or Lipstick, the UI. Um, but I mean, really, that's that's about all of it. It's really damn good aside from that. Um, so yeah, if you're looking into a Linux device, I would recommend Sailfish OS X uh, on a Sony Xperia. And while you can use some sort of Linux on this, I have had success using Postmarket OS on this. Um, you may just be limited to a few things. Obviously with you know Linux and stuff and having the mobile uh, Linux phones out there, they are going to require a bit more time for adaptation. Rather than this kind of is that bridge where not only do you have the Sailfish apps, which I believe are written in Qt, uh, but you have that bridge into Android where you can still continue using your Android apps. Um, 
the only issue with that too is that you will run into issues like if we pull up drone mobile here you will get a problem where it'll tell you that it can't run without google play services well that's a lie as you can see i can just tap to the side and i can oh or not it's probably having issues because i can't pull up my location um, but you know we can literally do everything aside from that um, some apps may require it. I haven't had success with PayPal. I've had success with some other banking apps, though. Um, but yeah, I would, I would definitely highly look into it. Um, it is pretty stable. I haven't had any crashes. Um, and as far as battery life so far, I've, I've had this charged at 100% since noon, and currently it's about 6:30 here. Um, I haven't had it plugged in aside from that, and we're only at 74%. So I think definitely running without all that crap in the background as well as being able to just close all those apps at any time you want, um, you know, not using Android constantly, if you will, is definitely a battery saver. So let's see how long we can go here without charging this. Um, we're on Wi-Fi and our SIM right now. Um, let's see here. Do we have Bluetooth enabled? Yes, we do. Okay. So, yeah. So, it's even with almost all of our wireless services enabled, we're, we've only lost about 25% through a six hour period. So, I definitely say it's pretty good. Um, we haven't used it aggressively, you know, watching videos and all that hours on end. But, uh, yeah. So, take a look, see how it fits you. And um, even if you want, while well, it doesn't include the Android uh, app support, you can get a trial of Sailfish OS X on JAWS website. I'll keep all the links in the description if you want to check it out. Um, this is currently out of stock with the wireless circle on New Egg, so you might want to look at elsewhere. I'll keep that link in the description as well, just in case. Um, but yeah, take a look, see how you like it. Thanks for watching.